John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb, and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in the Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, is, fu is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is all is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And that he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you to just um, bless the rest of the service, Lord. Just guide Josh as he goes through the Word to uh, just help him to edify us and to educate us. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> John chapter 3, a famous verse, uh, very familiar to many of us. But, as always is, sometimes when we uh, hear these truths, if we're maybe in a carnal mindset or we're just not feeling very spiritual that day, sometimes we hear these truths, receive them carnally, and we marvel at these things, okay? 
Uh, it happens to me all the time. If I'm just not really in it, I'm in a haze in the morning, I'm just kind of reading my Bible, I'll marvel at things. Rather than do biblically what we should do, and that's meditate upon these things. The spiritual mind will meditate upon truths. They'll sink in, they'll, they'll go over them over and over, and they'll start to, start to flourish and to grow within the mind and within the heart and within the spirit. The carnal mind usually marvels and gets, gets kind of confused and gets put off by these things. But that's completely normal. That's the human experience. That, that's the battle between the flesh and the spirit that all of us are constantly going through. I'm talking today about the wind bloweth. The wind bloweth, okay? Um, focusing in on verse 7 there, it says, Marvel not, and see this was a problem obviously that Nicodemus had, was that he was hearing spiritual truths, receiving them carnally, and marveling at the thing. So Jesus has to kind of bring him down to the spiritual level and say, Hey, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. He said, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Focusing in on the wind blowing here. The first thing that you'll notice is that the wind blows where it listeth. Where it listeth, that's just lists, right? It blows where it lists. That's where the wind is going to go. In other words, it has an order, just like we know. List, check one, check two, check three, and it goes down. The Spirit has a general order to the way that He does things. He does it in His own path. He does it in His own way. He has His own manner. The wind, being typified by the Spirit here, blows where it listeth. And now here's the sound thereof. Go to John chapter 16. You can keep your finger in John chapter 3. We will come back there. In John chapter 16, a few pages to the right. John chapter 16, and in verse 7, talking about the, the order or the manner or the path or the list of the Spirit, the Bible says in verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And so the first step of the order of the Spirit is, he had to wait until his, his ministry of being the Comforter to this world had to wait up until the time when Jesus went away. And then the Spirit could come in. His order is as follows, verse 8, And when he is come, talking about the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9, of sin, because they believe not on me. Verse 10, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Verse 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Verse 12 says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. And honestly, when I read the verses that we just read, I feel a little bit like the, like the apostles at this time. Uh, there, there's many things I feel need be revealed to me about the Spirit of God, His ministry, His presence, His job, His list, right? The list that He follows, the order that He performs, the things that He does. I still need to learn about this thing. The, the Holy Spirit, it's amazing. He's the often forgotten part of the Godhead, is He not? When we, when we lead somebody to the Lord, we often talk about how the Father hath sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, and too often the Spirit doesn't come into play until the person is obviously saved afterwards. We give them the impression of a trinity existing, but we often neglect the Spirit, His ministry, His doings, His workings. And the reality is, is because the way of the Spirit, the manner of the Spirit is quite often a little bit confusing, even for us, a little bit hard to grasp. It's not until the Spirit enters into us and begins revealing Himself unto us in the presence of ourselves that we start to get a grasp of these things. The first thing we see about Him is that as the wind, He bloweth where He listeth. He has this order. When He comes, He reproves the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. There are many things to be revealed afterwards. Continue on in verse 13, you'll begin to learn more about the Spirit of Truth. It says in verse 13, How be it, when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, 
that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So the first part of the Spirit's ministry is the reproof, correct, of sin, righteousness, and judgment. After that, you find that his main purpose is to bring all truth to us, guide us into all truth. He hears from the Father. He, he speaks of the Son, or of the Word of God. He reveals truths unto us, and that's his ministry, as a guide to the blind. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, was blind, but now I see, right? And when that spirit enters into a man, only believing the simple truths of the gospel, that's sometimes when he really starts to see. And I remember this moment very clearly when I was saved that suddenly it was like scales were lifted off of my eyes. And even the world outside my doorstep looked differently. Why? Because the Spirit has entered in and I start to be guided into all truth. There's a new level of clarity into my life. Verse 14 says, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So here the Spirit's ministry is twofold. The threefold, rather, the reproof in those three areas. And now he's guiding to all truth and he's glorifying first and foremost the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were to look back in chapter 15, and in verse 26, it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. He is testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why sometimes, like I said, it's, it's very difficult for somebody who's not saved, he's just learned the gospel, God sent his Son to be the Savior of the world, they believe on Jesus Christ, they often have a very shallow understanding of the Spirit of God. But when the Spirit of God enters in, he doesn't start saying, well, this is about me, well, this is about me, well, this is about me. He goes, this is about Christ. It's about Christ. It's about Christ. He's, he's so selfless in his ministry. It's always to point you to Christ, to point you to the Savior, to glorify Jesus Christ as he's guiding you into all truth. His ministry is to glorify and to testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And this is what you and I experienced today. This is what you and I took part of today. That spirit of prophecy going out and testifying of the Savior. But Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2. A few pages to the right in Acts chapter 2. And so Christ is always lifted up by the Spirit of God. Christ is always being exalted and constantly being, being lifted up and testified of by the Spirit of God. It's just one of his ministries. It's just one of his, his, his steps in his list of things to do. His order, his path, his manner. The wind bloweth where it listeth, the Bible says. In Acts chapter 2, and beginning in verse 1, you all know this, the Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty wind. Here is that wind of the Spirit of God blowing where it listeth, doing what he will, following his manner and his way. Continues, it says, And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. And were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's connected with the tongues that just came out of them once the Spirit of God came upon them. Verse 7 says, And they were all amazed and marveled, why is that? Saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? We know their tongue. They're of Galilee. We heard them talking earlier. Are not these Galileans? They're marveling. They're, they're perplexed by it all. Verse 8, and how hear we every man in our own language wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them, the Galatians, 
we hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. What was happening here? The Spirit entered in as a wind he listeth, he did as he pleased, and when he entered in and did his work, he had everybody speaking in the tongues of all these nations listed, and what were they doing? Speaking the wonderful works of God, testifying of the Savior. They were going about and they were preaching the gospel. They were witnessing of the risen Savior. They were telling people how to be saved, how to be born again. The ministry of the Spirit, when He comes upon them, the wind blows into a room and upon a people, is to take them out to do the same ministry that He does. And what's that ministry? Lifting up the Savior. Rising the Savior before men, testifying of Him, and that's the spirit of prophecy. The wind blows where He listeth, and after this manner, he goes and does his business, and when he's upon men, he takes them with him to do the same. Now, it is important to us as believers that we be led of the same Spirit. We need to follow after the Spirit. We can't direct Him. We can't guide Him. We can't, we can't manipulate Him. The Bible's clear. The wind bloweth where it listeth, not where Brother Josh listeth, not where anyone in this room listeth or desires him to go. The Spirit moves where he feels like it, where he wants to go, to perform his duty, to perform his task. And we know this just by experience. This is why God, I love when he brings a physical example to a spiritual truth. We know that wind pretty much just goes wherever it feels like. And one of the ways that we see that, as you drive into town, you see all these wind turbines, right, lining the, lining the countryside. Okay, every one of those is on a pivot. Meaning that wherever the wind feels like going that day, that, that, that turbine's going to turn. It, it's, it's being directed by the wind. The, they don't just set up the turbine, lock it down, and say that's where the wind has to come from. No, they allow for that thing to turn wherever the wind listeth, wherever the wind feels like coming from at a particular time. We can't predict, we can't direct, we can't motivate or manipulate God's Holy Spirit to do what we feel like. Right? And this is probably why when Jesus says, after this manner, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, we have to petition our, 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 our complaints, our requests, our supplications to God the Father, because it's God the Father that can manipulate and use and empower and, and control the, how the Spirit works. We don't control the Spirit. The Spirit should be controlling us, and we need to get on His timeline, on His program. And his program is what? Very plain and simply, to lift up Jesus Christ and to testify of the truths of salvation. The main time that you see the Spirit being moved, Spirit being motivated, the Spirit being manipulated, it always comes from the Father or from Jesus himself. You can turn to Mark chapter 4, and while you're doing I'm just going to bring up the example of how, of how Jesus, when he was in the upper room after he'd been resurrected, he came to the disciples, the Bible says, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed that wind on him. He let that wind be upon them, and he said, receive ye this. This wasn't men conjuring up some shambhaladula tongues so that they could get the Spirit on them. No, the Spirit can't be manipulated. He does as He listeth, not what we feel like Him doing. And so Jesus, when He said receive the Spirit, you see that He had power to give the Spirit and depart that same Spirit unto others. If you go to Mark chapter 4, we're going to learn a few more things. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, and it says, And the same day... When the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, are, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? 
And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And so here we see again that the wind is blowing where it lists this. So Christ is asleep in the base of the ship in the hinder parts, and the wind just rises and begins to beat as a storm of wind upon these ships so that they get overfilled with water as it comes in and begins to take them under. The wind is doing as it pleaseth, and, it's a, a, and, and it needs to be in agreement then with what the Father and the Son listed. Well, how do we know that? Well, first of all, we can go to 1 John 5, 7, where it says, these three are one. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. They're united in their front. They're united in their purpose. They all are listing the same thing. They have the same device, the same plan, the same motivation, right? We follow, the next thing that we'll see, by hearing and believing. So the Spirit moves. The only one able to manipulate it is Christ himself at this uh, point in the Scriptures. We follow when we hear and we believe and when we respond accordingly. Well, what do we see here? In verse 35, Jesus Christ himself, the Word of God said, Let us pass over to the other side. Now you look down in verse 39 and we see Jesus he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? If they were appropriately responding to the word of God sent forth, they would have had the faith to believe, verse 35, when Jesus said, Let us pass over. They would have found themselves down in the hinder part of the ship, taking a snooze, and set there up in the top part of the ship, trying to save their own souls, trying to save their own lives, trying to, trying to get themselves out of this situation, till finally they came to the Lord and said, Lord, help us. And the Lord exhibited his power, said, Peace, be still unto the wind, and was able to stop that. These men couldn't do it themselves. They had to go to the Savior. What they should have done is bore in the storm, bore the wind, and how would they do such a thing? By placing their feet firmly on, by faith, on the word that Jesus said when he said, let us pass over unto the other side. There, there was no wavering in there. There was no doubting in there. Jesus said, we're going to go to the other side. And if they would have believed him, they wouldn't have got worried. They would have withstood the winds. They wouldn't have been fearful. They would have had faith. And now they wouldn't have been standing fearful and said, what manner of man is this? That even these winds and these waves obey them. The Spirit then is giving us here an example of how we ought to be. When the Word goes forth, which is a ministry of the Spirit, right? He brings all truth into our remembrance. He brings something like, let us pass over to the other side as a position that we can stand on and be firm and say, Christ will get us through to the other side. We need to just obey the Word, even as the Spirit here obeyed the Word that went forth. <clears throat> The next part that you see, if you look back in John chapter 3, it said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And we see that the Spirit of God does whatsoever he listeth, only directed by the Word of God. When Jesus says, peace be still, the wind is peaceful and still. The next thing you see is that it says, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not tell whether it cometh or whether it goeth. Whence it cometh and whither it goeth. And this is another illustration that we see in our daily lives. When a wind comes upon you, you hear the wind, you feel the wind, you even smell the wind, and sometimes you can even taste the wind that's coming at you, but you never see it, do you? You never see that wind unless something's caught up in it. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And so, we don't know, as the Bible is plain to say here, whence it cometh or whether it goeth. We can't see it. We can't see that it's coming from here and going to there. We can't see the Spirit moving in the wind, directing us one way or another, or moving one way or another. We can't tell. And welcome to the faith walk. Because so often in our lives, God is moving as the wind, and we can hear, we can feel we can smell and even taste with all of our senses, engaging what's going on in our lives, and yet we never quite see. But that's good because we need to be in the position in our lives where we're not walking 
by sight, but rather walking by faith. And when we're walking by faith, it's following that wind. It's following that spirit as he guides and as he glorifies the Savior. And we experience this all the time in soul hunting. Maybe today was a little bit of a, of, of a dry sensation when we were out there. Maybe we didn't experience a lot of divine appointments. Some of us did. But we were out there doing what the Spirit wanted us to. We were out there laboring as the Spirit wanted us to. And yet there's sometimes where it just seems so perfect and so divine and so purposed and so perfect when we get into a situation and I have just a few examples here that I've experienced recently. The first was we were coming back from Cincinnati, and Brother Shane was driving the, the van, and, and many of us were packed inside this thing. And then suddenly, now, we don't know him too often as an erratic, sway, swervy type of driver, unless he's trying to make time trials or something like that. But anyways, suddenly Brother Shane just kind of, kind of, kind of went left, okay? The wind bloweth where it listeth. The Spirit did what he will. And he's like, how did I just suddenly go off the highway as if I was missing a turn? What am I doing? He, he, he turns back on, crosses over the bridge, and then we get back on the highway. And we're all like, what in the world was that? He goes, I have no idea, but we're going to find out. He said these words, we're going to find out what the Spirit was doing at this time. And this is just the experience that we had. The wind blew where it listed, where he wanted to, where he wanted to direct. And we heard the sound thereof, but could not tell where he was coming from and where he was going. And so here we are, and we enter into uh, the dinner place. We're going to sit down. We're going to eat at the buffet. We're going to enjoy our meal. And this place is just packed, okay? It's full of people. There's this, there's this zealous waitress doing a fantastic job, if I might say, running around, busting the tables, bringing the drinks, cleaning up the plates, just go, 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 go. She was not stopping, and we were all taking notice. This is great. It's fantastic. Good job. But all of us get to that point in our meal, we're looking at one another, we're wondering, who's going to try to give her the gospel? We're thinking, there's no way we can, it's so busy, what's going on? Well, we, were, we remember back to the time when Shane suddenly swerved off the road, setting us back by two, three, four minutes, whatever it was, when suddenly, peace be still entered into that room. Suddenly, this busy, swamped, chaotic, kids yelling, screaming, food flying all over the place, situation just was instantly calm. We offer the tip, we offer a gospel track, we say, hey, do you have time to hear the gospel? And she's like, oh, I really don't. Well, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> Peace be still entered into that room. The timing appointed by the fact that we had missed that turn and just arrived there just in time. Were we four minutes earlier, we would have tried to give her the gospel and leave when it was still busy, when it was still swamped. But at that moment, it was completely quiet and just in time, she was ready to hear that five-minute gospel presentation and get saved. Glory to God. Amen. At that same time, it was, it was, it was uh, Miss, Miss Sabrina who tried to give her the gospel. She got a little nervous, a little, little tongue-tied, because she looked over, and there's this guy sitting there, and he's looking at her while she's about to give the gospel. And she was just like, oh, oh, oh. I, I can't do it. Brother Josh, what do you do? Okay, and I stepped in and, and did the gospel presentation. She got saved. But well, wouldn't you know it, because again of that, of that time difference, we get to the gas station at the exact moment when the Shane is lining up to pay for the gas, and behind him is standing that same man that was just standing at Miss Sabrina while she was trying to preach the gospel. And he starts talking to him, and it turns out the guy was a Christian. And he was watching her because he himself felt like he should be giving the gospel. He himself was encouraged by the fact that there's believers telling other people about Jesus. We say, Sabrina, don't get embarrassed. That guy wanted to hear the good news. He wanted to hear you give somebody the good news. And she got all encouraged at this time. And all of this is because the Spirit of God blew where he was, the blew where he felt like going, moved us where he wanted us to be at a particular time, and everything lined up. To where God could do this great miracle in two people's lives. And three people, four people, five people, all of us were just like, woo, that was great. That was awesome. Praise God for that wonderful experience. All because God led us by faith and we found out later. So often it finds out, we're going to find out. Why did we get a flat tire? We're going to find out. Well, well why, did, why are we late for that appointment? We're going to find out. And if we walk by faith, not by sight, God will make those situations come to the point where they're divine appointments. And we'll see God working in our lives like that all the time. The same thing happened with uh, um, 
in Texas when we were down there. So, so Brother Shane and I got paired up for soul winning. We, we, we each had our own pair and we were going to go to different areas. But then, but then a couple of brethren come up to Shane and they're like, look at this map. And it was just like clustered house, 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 house. Just like, just like ghetto. Just, we looked at it and we were like, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just, wow, we have to go there. And so, you know, we, we, we ditch our soul winning partners, <laughs> Shane and I, we pair them up one together and they go that way because we just saw this and it was just so perfect. But again, because of that, we're, we need to figure out why these brethren came up to us and showed us this map. It's because God was moving in that time. We, we ditch our partners, we go and we find this, this great harvest of children, upon children, upon children that are getting saved. So much so that, 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 that by the time we had preached the gospel there a little bit, we, um, we had this, this young boy named, named Douglas Cook saved, right? This guy gets saved and he promises he's going to read his Bible every day. And we're like, where do you go, man? You read the Bible. We're going to give you a shout out at church. You're going to hear your name mentioned in a sermon. You just got to tune in. And this other kid, he got, he got saved, but halfway through the gospel presentation, he's already encouraging his other, no, it's just believe, it's, it's through Jesus, and he's already telling his friends like how to get saved and encouraging them along the way. He bows his head, and we named him Preacher Man, because he promised he's going to read his Bible every day, and Preacher Man's going to grow up, and he's going to be the next pastor in this neighborhood, and he's going to turn that place upside down again. But we go, and we're preaching, and we're soul winning, and we're just, we've given up all of the Bibles. We've gotten rid of all of the DVDs. It just, 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 could, just could not preach enough. And then we pull out of that place, 19 salvations, and I'm walking out, and I'm just like, I need, I need 20. We need 20. We need 20. Well, it's time to go for Mexican. And, and another brother who wasn't even soul winning, as Brother Hernandez, he picks the Mexican spot. We go there, and we're walking up to go get food, and I'm like, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. And I'm looking, and I see somebody playing a guitar across the road. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go there. I walk up at just the right time where this guy's finishing his Pearl Jam song to see that the lady that he is with is already crying. And I'm just like, oh, what in the world is What's wrong? I start giving her the gospel. And he's a lot like the, uh, the, the, the lady that was in the, um, the passage that Brother Shane read, where she's like, these men are, he's like, these men are the servants of the Most High God. And show us the way of salvation. Like, he was saying all these Christian-like things, but I could tell that his spirit was contrary. I could tell that there was, there was something off about this guy. He kept inter interjecting, being like, yeah, you got to hear these guys. Yeah, you got to hear what they're saying. And I'm trying to preach to her. And then finally, she's like, will you just let him finish? Right? And then Brother Shane comes up, distracts that guy. There's a video of him playing the guitar where I'm witnessing to this girl. And again, I walked up to her crying, perhaps on her way somewhere else. I walked up at the appropriate moment to a Mexican place I didn't even pick because I believe the Spirit of God was moving me to see this woman saved. You could tell she had a rough life. You could tell she was influenced by, by all the wrong people and all the wrong things that she was hurting. And after she bowed her head and prayed, she said to me, she said, I am just living my life all wrong. I am doing everything wrong. I'm in a bad spot. I'm, 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 I'm living a wicked life. And I said, hey, you got a pocket there in your jacket. I'm like, just big enough for this New Testament. I'm like, I'm not going to promise you that today is going to be the next day where your life is just perfect, sunshine, roses, and, and wonderful. But I will promise you that your, your position in heaven is going to change your outlook on your life. And if you take that book and you hold it dear to you, and you bring it with you everywhere you go, and every day you try to read a little bit of that, even if you can just get three words into your heart, God will begin to work in your life, and you will never regret it. And, and, and it, was just, it was just this glorious salvation. And I'm bawling my eyes out trying to eat Mexican food. And it was, just, it was just so touching. It was all because of way back, God moving to bring men to me to say, look at this spot. And Brother Shane and I are going, yeah, that's it. We're going on salvation. Ditching your friends, ditching our, you know, go, going and choosing to follow the Spirit of God moving in our lives. And I believe he was there ordering our steps. And this has just happened time and time and time again. The best way that you can really experience God moving in your lives is to just, just plug out. Just, just, just pull a plug in everything you got to do. And if you're going soul winning, turn the phone off. If you're going soul winning, get rid of the distractions and just let God choose. How many times, Brother Shane would say, do we get to go to the best soul winning spot simply because of somebody having, having, the, having the gall to be like, you know, 
We're taking this area. Why? Because Canadians were better in the north. Right? Just, just little things like that where we, by faith, chosen to follow God and we found him moving so much in wonderful ways. And we could tell time and time and time where God moved in our lives in those ways. But in all of these cases, we had no way of telling when the decisions were made where the Spirit of God was moving, where the Spirit of God was leading. But one thing we do know is that he was guiding us to all truth, he was leading us to glorify God, and he was helping us to reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And we got on his plan and allowed him to move. The wind blew where he ordered. The wind blew where he will. The wind blew where he listed. We heard the sound, and we followed. And the Bible says plainly, the wind bloweth where it listeth. And now here's the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. And here's the Christian. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. If you're born of the Spirit, and you're yielding to the Spirit, you're being led of the Spirit, you know what happens to you? You blow where it listeth. Others hear the sound thereof, but canst not tell whether they cometh or whether they goeth. And such is the case when Canadians go soul winning. <laughs> Where did these guys come from? What are they doing here? It's like what, what, what Brother Shane was saying. We get dropped into an area and it's just like, poof. We just scatter. We're knocking doors. We're meeting people in the streets. We're just fully plugged in and engaged in how the Spirit is moving. And that's what the Bible says. As the wind bloweth, wherever it listeth, and the, the turbines left to just kind of kind of bend with it. That's how the spirit moves and the turbines now, this, this picture of the flesh, this picture of this world, this picture of the dirt, right? So is the one that is led of the spirit. And when we're led of that spirit, we're like that wind coming through. And the carnal men that need their savior. And the carnal men that are lost without a shepherd. And the carnal men that need their souls to be saved are just at the will of the spirit of God who's moving and coming to get the gospel into their hearts. Obviously, they have to cho choose to yield to them. It's not just like we can show up and the Spirit of God is just going to take them with them. But sometimes, the appointments are so divine, it might as well be. I've experienced times where people are just like, man, this is exactly what I needed to hear today, and I didn't even know it, and I didn't even want it. But it was perfect, and it was all Spirit-led. I believe that. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in all his ways. So what's that saying? It's saying that the steps are what's ordered. In other words, the steps come first. You need to go out and by faith take a step for God. And as you do, he's ordering your ways. He's delighting in your ways. And you should delight in his ways one of the same. The relationship being described in verse 8 is wonderful because it's talking about the Spirit of God, a spiritual being, an all-powerful, almighty being, doing whatever he feels like, and talking about the one that's born of the Spirit doing the same. Going out in the will of the God of heaven, of the God of the universe, and performing his will, completely given over and controlled by it. Yes, within my own framework of free will. Yes, me making the decisions. Yes, me taking the steps, but let of God none the same. Delighting in his ways. And here we are in Windsor, Ontario. Go to John chapter 3 and verse 7. Here we are in Windsor, Ontario. The Bible says, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And don't marvel at this. Meditate upon this. Here in Windsor, you must be reviled, revived as a city. It must be quickened. It must be restored. It must get fired up. It must not relent. It must not push back. It must not fade away. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Hey, this isn't just a gospel message here. This is one for the, the spiritually quickened. You gotta be, you gotta be born again just every day. Die to self and be born again and follow the Spirit of God. You must be born again, day in, day out. Die to self and raise again unto new life. Die again and raise again in order that you can do the will of the Father. Marvel not that I say this. Meditate upon these words. Get revived. Get quickened. Get restored. Get fired up for the things of God. Be led of the Spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And now here's the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. 
And here in Windsor, we know we got problems. We know that there's, there's, there's weak, dead, lame churches just littering the landscape. We know that everyone we experience today is more or less just spiritually negligent. They want nothing to do with this stuff. Don't bring that Bible to me. I, I got my way figured out. We know that the people here, and I, and I, and I, I feel for you. you, you patiently waited for what was, what was all but promised to take place in Detroit. Right? Uh, many of us moved here in order that we could, we could eventually cross over that border and go to the church that we had hoped for. We had our hopes up, and we were let down, right? As circumstances arose, and now there's not a church going over there. You need to be revived. Marvel not that I stand to you, you must be born again. Don't just die. Don't just fade away. Don't just give up. Don't just fall. Now many of you are wondering, you're worrying, well, why did I even come here? Just like when we swerved off that road, right? Just like when we picked that map. God knows, and soon you'll find out. Now you're wondering, you're worrying. We need to start waiting. We need to start waiting God's way. Do you know how God's people wait? Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Just keep walking. Keep living the life, keep loving your family, keep loving one another, keep loving the lost, keep preaching the gospel, keep doing what you're supposed to be doing, get the sin out of your life, clean up your acts, encourage one another, strengthen one another, keep walking, and your steps will be ordered by the Lord. Plug out of this world. We all got day jobs, man. We got stuff we need to do. Ladies, you got house cleaning to do, right? There's all sorts of things going on in your life, busynesses. Take a Take a, a bold and faithful step and just plug out. Every morning be born again. Do your job in the power of the Spirit. Do your cleaning and your cooking and your labors in the, in the power of the Spirit. Have Him lead you. I fear that sometimes we get the mindset that it's very earthly in regard to waiting for God. We're waiting for God to bring us a man. We're waiting for God to bring us a church. We're waiting for God to bring us this and that and this and that. And it, it ends up being very carnally minded. I need this before I can serve the God. We should be waiting for the wind. And the wind is what you can't see. You're going to hear it. You're going to feel it. You're going to experience it moving in your life, but you will never see where the Spirit is leading. John chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? See how carnally minded he was? We get the same way. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou master of Israel and knowest not these things? You've read your Bible through cover to cover. How many times? You've listened to umpteen sermons. You, you've, you, you've sat through church services. You, you've sang the hymns. You're a master of these things. How can you not understand it? No, it's not this. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? What is Jesus highlighting here is that there is a heavenly thing that you're missing out when you're mindful of the things of this earth. We wanted that man to bring a church here. It didn't happen. Are we going to give up? Or are we going to press on and wait for God to show you why that didn't happen? To show you why you missed that turn? To show you why you missed that opportunity? To show you why you fumbled this aspect of your life? Wait on Him. Don't marvel, but patiently wait and meditate upon these things. Quite often we're saying, how God? How can you work in this situation? How can you possibly do anything worthwhile in Windsor? He's going to show you. God is going to show you. There is a heavenly wind working. You can't tell whence he cometh or where he's going. But I think you hear it. I hear it. I've seen what's going on, right? I can't by I can't through the eyes of this carnal life tell you what is on the horizon for the people of Windsor that we have gathered here today. But I've heard something. I've felt something. I'm experiencing something at this moment, and I know it's bigger and better than we can even imagine. The Spirit of God, that wind is blowing where He listeth. You know what He needs? He needs somebody to believe Him, to trust Him, and to follow Him. 
Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. God here today, just as he did when he first unfolded the ministry of the Comforter, wants to guide you into all truth so that he can be glorified. This is, this is God's business 101. Guide you into the truth. Lead you into the truth so that he can be glorified. Show you a better way. Show you the living way. Show you where you ought to be so that he can be glorified. God loves getting the glory, and God gets most glory when he's in situations that are as bleak as they are here. You know that? God will take a situation that is just like, carnally speaking, there is no hope. These, these, people, are, these people don't want it. These people are rejecting it. These people want, want nothing to do with the gospel, and God will say, I can get a lot of glory there. He just needs a few people to get on board. The wind blows where he lists it. The spirit is already blowing where he feels like it. You need to be that everyone that is born of the spirit, carried of the spirit, basically, basically driven by the spirit and after the spirit. Are you listening today? Can you hear the sound thereof? You're going to get a little charismatic today. People of Windsor, you haven't had your best day. You haven't preached your best gospel. You haven't prayed your best prayer. Something's about to happen. <laughs> Do you believe that? Honestly. We, 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 we laugh at those inspirational words, but, but God is in the business of motivating us and encouraging us and strengthening us. He has a spirit of God that wants to lead you. Wind's already blowing. Look at verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, look at this, he took what was hurting them. He took what was harming them. He took what was burdening them, and he lifted it. As Moses lifted up the serpent, your burden. As Moses lifted up your problems. As Moses lifted up your hurts, your harms, your, your excuses. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. It's the ministry of the Spirit playing out again, lifting up, elevating, just highlighting the Savior. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you think God wants you to perish out here, just fade away, wither to nothing spiritually? No, God wants to be lifted up. The Son of Man needs to be lifted up, and that's the ministry of the wind, that whosoever believes, trusts. This isn't just for the gospel. This isn't just for the lost person out there. you got to believe him today, Christian. you got to believe in him. And whosoever does should not perish. You're not going to waste away. You're not going to be famished. You're not going to faint. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life eternal life for now that you can live it. Yeah, we're all going to go to heaven one day and experience eternal life now. You know that you can experience eternal life today by believing. You won't perish. You won't faint. You won't fade away. you got to believe. you got to trust. you got to follow whithersoever the Spirit listed. Whithersoever the wind is blowing, just get on board. It's like a kite. Just grab a hold of that thing and soar wherever he wants you to. The wind bloweth where he listeth, Thou hearest the sound thereof, so believe him, trust him, follow him. How? Hear and obey. Just, just get a hold of it. God's waiting to work in Windsor. The people of God just need to get on board with this program. And I think you're already doing it. Step by step by step by step. Those steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in all his way. He delights in what you're doing here. You just got to keep at it. You got to stay united. It's the main purpose why I came down here. I knew there were some believers that came all the way up there to encourage me. I'm all the way down here so that I can encourage you guys to stay in the fight. Don't give up. God's working. God's got a plan. You just don't see it yet. Why in the world did we miss that term so that somebody could be saved? Why in the world did we miss it on that opportunity to have a great church in Detroit? Because someone, somewhere, the Spirit of God is blowing so that, hey, wouldn't it be even better if that great church was just here in Windsor? You don't have to cross the lake, every, every the river all the time, right? God's working. Just trust that. Follow that. Count on it. 